Hey, what is up my hoopy fruits? I am coming to you, whoa, with a reading vlog for the 100 by Cass Morgan. So my relationship with The 100 is I started watching it a couple years ago. Um, I've heard about it before, but there was the whole Clexa thing and I don't know, the fandom kind of scared me off. <laughs> so I was bored and somebody said that uh, Erica Sarah was on it and I was like, oh, I love her. I must watch the show. So basically I did. Uh, I, I love the show. It's one of my favorites. Um, even when it's weak, I think it tells a really great story. So I'm really eager to jump into this book and see how they adapted it for television, what they left out, what they put in, what they did worse, what they did better. Um, and so let's get into it. So uh, I have been spoiled for some of this book, um, let's see, what do I know? Or maybe people have told me that things have happened in it, but I haven't read it, so I can't confirm or deny. Um, apparently the Chancellor is Bellamy's father, is one thing, and another thing is that, um, it's been a lot longer than 97 years since the Earth was basically knocked out. So uh, that's it going on. So uh, I'm going to start reading it and uh, see how it goes. So first chapter and Clark has already punched the dude. A doctor. So that's cool. I'm glad that they kept that aspect of our character in the show. Um, Apparently both her parents are dead, which I I didn't see coming, which is really interesting because like a lot of the stuff in the show comes from her relationship with Abby and it really changes and recontextualizes it with both parents being dead. That's really interesting. Um, Wells is in this book, which honestly one of the things like I'm hoping for is like more Wells, less Finn. Is Finn even in, in this book? Oh, I hope not. I don't like Finn. But uh, anyway, so the next chapter is Wells, so let's see. Friends, I am loving this book. I'm a little um, over a fifth of the way through it, and I took some notes about things I want to talk about. Um, first of all, I love, love the way that Clark and Wells meets. Um, his mom is dying, which is really interesting because in the show, like, it doesn't mention his mom at all. I mean, presumably he always had one, but nobody has thought to mention her, I think. Um, she's dying of some illness, like cancer, I suppose. So he's reading the fall and decline of the Roman Empire to her, but it's locked away because of the remnants of humanity have to be protected so like he's reading it and he's telling her about it so basically Clark tells him hey you know I have this thing and if you have it on the books it will prevent the alarm from detecting the cellulose in the pages and you can go and you can read to your mom for a couple hours it'll be fine and that's how they meet and I love Book Clark so much more than I did in the pilot. Like, she was promising in the pilot, but in the book, she's just cool. And, and I fuck with her. I fuck with her hard. Um, so, um, in the book, Wells sets a fire to this tree, which is supposedly the last tree on Earth that was taken during whatever happened 300 years ago. Still not exactly sure about that, but anyway, it's a huge tree. So, uh, the tree almost gets up on fire and they wanted to execute him. And his father's like, no, no, not my son. Here's an interesting one. Um, Octavia is 14 
in the book. Which, when you think about Bellamy's behavior in the show, makes a lot more sense. Like, why he's so protective of a 14-year-old rather than a 17-year-old. I mean, you know, you got the whole my sister, my responsibility thing. But, um, it just, it doesn't seem as creepy and potentially incestuous. Because, honestly, that's the vibe, like, through, like, the whole show. I mean, not the whole show, but, like, through the pilot till, um, Earth Kills, I think. That's the third episode, right? Like, I was like, okay, he, he wants to bang his sister. That's just nasty. But, uh, in the book so far, you don't get that vibe, which I'm down with. <laughs> Apparently, Octavia and Bellamy's mother had some sort of accident. Uh, we come to what I think may be my favorite character in the book so far and like I'm only 20% on So we have Glass who is not in the show but in the book is Wells' best friend. Um, she had a thing with some guy named Luke and then she did something so she was confined. That's So she escapes and she ends up back with Luke and they have this whole thing and he didn't even know that she'd been confined for however long because it's strange because they changed the times like in the show for Clark and Octavia they were in jail for like a year um and the book Octavia was interesting um, but, but Glass is super cool, and I'm, like, really intrigued to read more about her. Like, super excited for that. Um, Bellamy, there was not a plot to shoot the Chancellor. Um, Bellamy just wanted to threaten the Chancellor. He grabbed a gun, he put it to his head, and then he actually ended up shooting him. Which is, like... So interesting, and honestly, I can't tell if, like, morally that makes it better or worse. Somebody hit me up on that. I'm really interested in, in your thoughts. In the book, Clark also had a cellmate named Thalia, who is very wounded at this point. I don't think that she's gonna make it. She's trying to save her friend. Uh, when they got down, like, one o'clock, so it was like, crap, we had to find, like, antiseptic and binges to patch up our wounds because we're in air and there's bacteria that we don't know about, which, yes, like, I, I think that Clark so far is so much better in the book than in the pilot. And I'm specifically talking about the season one pilot because season one was just not that great but that's okay a mysterious thing happened clark's kind of a homebody and she's doing her work which is an assignment on vampires in the 20th century so basically it made it sound like it was a twilight like basically they were studying history and they were doing a thing on twilight which is just, I don't know why that's so funny to me. Because basically, I mean, that's what we're doing now when we do things like Great Expectations. It's like popular literature that like turn a tide or something. And yeah, that's true at Twilight, but it's still really funny to think about it when you think of how many people absolutely hate Twilight. It's really interesting to think about. So anyway, her parents, who, like I said, are dead in this book, um, they were executed and Clark was put in jail. So they're like, oh, don't go into this lab. And Clark hears this voice. So she goes into the lab. She figures out her mom's code, which team Clark. Clark is just great. And she goes in and there are all these children. And it turns out that apparently Clark's parents have been doing radiation experience, experiments on children which is just making you think cause that's gotta be okay by jaw right right so i mean apparently jaws are really 
bad guy. Uh, still haven't confirmed or denied if Jaha is Bellamy's father, so if I know more about that, I will tell you. Okay, have a happy day. Keep free. Bye for now. <gasps> I hope Linda's okay. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> Actually, Damon's told me before that she kind of can, like, die easily. This book, this book is going to be the death of me, I swear. So, we find out that, the re we found out that the reason Octavia was sent to jail was because when she was in the uh, foster care, she wanted to feed the children. So she stole food so she could feed children and they sent her to jail for it. And it's like, I don't know. I, I wish we saw this story in this show. I really do because it's so interesting to me. But I mean, I don't know. I, I love Marie as Octavia. But it's like, she's so different in this book. It's so weird. But, I don't know. So, uh, I want to talk about Rhodes, this Vice Chancellor Road. And, oh my god, I thought Kane was a cunt? <gasps> Rhodes is like, a million times worse. He is evil. Um, so like I said, it turns out that Clark's parents were experimenting on children. And... Rhodes told them that they had to, or they would kill Clark. I know, right? My mind was just like... So, and we have Luke and Glass, and the interesting thing is, is that the class system is, like, way more apparent in the book than it is in the show. I mean, like, yeah, in the first few episodes, you have, like, people calling Clark princess, and basically oh you're so much better but you don't really like see that in action you know um so in the book it's a lot more intense because Luke is like oh and you still don't want your mother to know about me and Gloss is like um no it's because I don't want you to be an accomplice for an escape convict and apparently I read wrong and somehow missed the part where she had a bracelet and yeah, so she was supposed to go on the ship because I was like, well, wait, weren't they supposed to send all of them to Earth? But yeah, okay, Glass was supposed to go too. She dipped out when Bellamy shot Jaha. And uh, yeah, so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read some more, find out what happens next because I am intrigued. I am loving this book. The writing is not the best, honestly, but it is engaging and that to me is far more important. This, this is a hell of a story. I'd highly recommend it. Oh, Luke just gave class a locket. That's so sweet. I want to know what happened to them. Like, I, one of the things this book does really well that the series, that the TV series started with was the flashbacks. Like, they actually explain a lot and they add it to character development. But it's not so much anymore. Although we did get a really great flashback episode with um, the garden in season 7, so that's cool. But anyway, I'm gonna go back to reading. This book's great. Also, something that I think I forgot to mention was that when they were put on the drop shit, this drop shit, <laughs> they actually had supplies. Like, they actually had supplies and medicine. So instead of expecting them to immediately forage for food, they, um, actually had the supplies with kind of makes me suspicious like is that weird because like 
the whole thing was that they didn't know that if the earth was inhabited or not so why potentially waste supplies of medicine and i get it it sounds horrible but i mean like if there's a 50 50 chance that they could die that's a 50 percent of resources going to waste so i'm thinking that somebody has been to earth before like it, they know that it's habitable because otherwise why would they do that like that that makes no sense anyway so i just wanted to mention that because they mentioned that they wanted to find the medical supplies that had been flung when it crashed to earth <sighs> Okay, so I'm confused because they mentioned that they were hiding Octavia, but then earlier in the book it mentioned that they were both in foster care after their mother had an accident. I mean, I'm sure that the book will explain it. I hope so. <laughs> I hope it's not one of those books. But uh, anyway, that's, that's strange. Thalia is in bad shape. Like, I, I'm pretty sure that she's gonna die. <laughs> he really loves you, you know. Who, Bellamy? Clark asked Thurtle. No, Wells. He came to Earth for you, Clark. She pressed her lips together. I didn't ask him to. We've all done things we're not proud of, Thalia said, her voice quiet. Okay, but, like, in Clark's defense... She thinks that Wells told his dad to keep in his good graces. You know, I mean, like, honestly, from that perspective, I can't blame her for hating him. This time the words weren't a prayer but a declaration. Clark refused to let Thalia die and nothing was going to stop her. She wouldn't let her best friend join the chorus of ghosts in her head. Okay, but like, if she has an infection... And you can't find medicine. It doesn't matter how hard you don't want her to die. It's going to happen. You think that somebody who, like, worked in medicine would understand that, but okay. Oh, Bowles. He's thinking about his dad. Like, he's scared that he died and he was floated. That's so sad. <laughs> Bellamy stood with an animal carcass draped over his shoulders, a trail of blood in his wake. Menacing. Oh, sweet. It's the two-headed deer. See, I was wondering if that was actually in the book. It actually is, so good to know. See, I'm wondering that, like, since it was 300 years, like, would there be a problem with... with radiation like with Mount Weather. Is Mount Weather even in this book? Like the, the series? Um because it seems like if it was 300 years old then like the radiation would have dissipated. Is that the word? So it might not be as much of a problem but I don't know that much about radiation. Okay in no wells you cannot make people love you again not something that can or should be forced. Octavia's favorite story was about an enchanted trash can. And we have the Lark kiss. Not even halfway through the book. It's so beautiful. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. Um, I'm waiting for my video to process. So, I'm using my phone. And it turns out that on Walden where Bellamy is from, being a guard isn't like something that you applied for. It's like you either become a guard or you do your parents' job. So that adds like a really interesting aspect to life on the arc as compared to the TV show. You guys, you guys, glass was pregnant with Luke's fetus and that's why she was confined. I just, I had no idea. Just didn't expect that.
my mind is shattered. And I don't know why, because this is something that the show actually dealt with, but... Oh, and, like, did she have an abortion? Did she have a miscarriage? Because, like, it doesn't mention... Huh, I, I don't know. Mm. My eyes were being wonky, so he could see me without glasses. Woohoo! Anyway, uh, back to reading some more. You guys, you guys, Glass was pregnant with Luke's fetus, and that's why she was confined. I just, I had no idea. Just, didn't expect that. My mind is shattered, and I don't know why, because this is something that the show actually dealt with, but... Oh, and, like, did she have an abortion? Did she have a miscarriage? Because, like, it doesn't mention... Huh, I, I don't know. Mm. My eyes were being wonky, so he could see me without glasses. Woohoo! Anyway, uh, back to reading some more. Somebody has just stolen drugs that Clark tucked away, ready to walk. And the thing is, is that I have no idea who. Like, it's an interesting mystery. Because, like, there's nobody here really who seems to have, like, symptoms of drug addiction. And they took the antibiotics too, which is just bizarre. I mean,. Like, if you were druggy, what would you want with antibiotics? Weird. Oops. Oopsie doodle. The girl that Clark discovered that her parents were doing radiation experiments are Lily. She is visited by Clark, like, a week before Clark's birthday. And she begs Clark to kill her to end her pain. This is not okay. I'm not okay with this at all. Okay, so they've accused Octavia of taking drugs and honestly made a pretty good case for it. So, like, that's completely possible, I guess. And apparently Octavia and Bellini's mother didn't die and childbirth, which for some reason when they said accident, I assume that that's what happened, so that's why the difference between them hiding her and her being in foster care, it's just really interesting because I, I really want to know what happened to the Blake mom. Oh my gosh, I, I cannot deal. Glass was going to break up with Loop save his life because he was afraid that he would try and die for her to do what's right by being the father of the baby and she goes to his room and his roommate tries to rape her and she freaks out and then she dumps Luke in the most horrible way imaginable just it's heartbreaking this book I can't I can't. Clark found the house. Good news. The bad news is that, you know, since it's 300 years from the apocalypse, um, it's filled with bones and falling apart. And the floor she was standing on broke and she fought through and Wells had to rescue her. So, you know, good and bad news to everything, I guess. So it turns out that not only did Octavia steal the drugs, Octavia and Bellamy's mother tried to kill Octavia. What? So it turns out that Octavia wasn't stealing food for starving orphans. You know, she was stealing drugs because she had such bad anxiety from being in foster care that they would give her sedatives and then they completely cut her off. So she stole them. What is going on? 
Glass had a miscarriage. They came after her for violating the Gaia Doctrine and she tried to get away because she didn't want to die and she ended up going down some stairs. And she wakes up and they tell her that she, uh, she lost her fetus. That's just, oh my god. This book. <laughs> Why wasn't this in the show? This is so good. It's crushing my soul, but it's so good. Oh my gosh. But, like, I, I can't help but think in the back of my mind with all the shitty shit going on that it's possible that they're lying. Which leads to, like, all sorts of horrifying ideas concerning the fact that they're doing radiation experiments on orphans. Yeah, scary stuff. Who was this mysterious other girl that hurt Bellamy so badly? Apparently there was only one other woman in his life. And he's like being all email about Clark possibly going back to Wells. Who, I want to remind you, were dating in this book. Why weren't they dating in the show? Okay, so Octavia just confesses to on the drugs and people are like, Oh, but you have no excuse because all of our lives are hard. And it's like, okay, fair point, but you weren't an addict. So there's a little bit of a difference, Missy. And they want to kill Octavia. This is basically what happened to Murphy. The only difference is that Octavia actually did do the crime because Amina was stealing, even though like she had a good reason. Um... And anybody who wants to say drug addiction is a sickness, just shut up. Even if you claim to be an addict yourself, you're deluding yourself and you're trying to put energy into the just world fallacy and I'll not fucking stand for it. Okay? Good. Glad we had this chat. Okay, this is like basically the show's thesis, so I'm going to read it. The council doesn't execute people for fun, Wells' voice shook with fury. Keeping humanity alive in space required extraordinary measures, sometimes cruel measures, Wells paused. But we have a chance to do better. So what, Graham growled. You're just going to give her a slap on the wrist and then make everyone pinky swear not to break the rules? A few snickers rose up from the crowd. No, Wells shook his head. You're right, there needs to be consequences. He took a deep breath. We'll banish them from camp. His voice was firm, but when he turned to Bellamy, his eyes seemed to contain a strange mixture of anguish and relief. Here's the thing about that, and, like, the issue that I had with Murphy's banishment in the show. Um, if they don't have supplies, that's literally condemning them to death. But you're washing your hands of it so you don't have to take responsibility. That's not a moral decision. It, it really is. Like, it's not any more moral than confining someone at 16 and then say that you're going to give them a fair trial and executing them at 18. You know, that's not justice. Apparently they've just been banished, but Bellamy and Octavia can say banished, can they? Like, I know the, like, very apparently the book and the first season were, like, very different, but, like, they can't be banished. Clark is the last person Bellamy thinks about before he falls asleep. That's so adorable. Hey, the antibiotics are working. I still think Thalia's gonna die. Thalia and Clark are talking about forgiving walls. It's very sweet. So now we have a flashback of Clark's parents' trial. Oof. Ja had to know about the radiation, and that's why he's killing them, right? Well, of course Rose is gonna deny it. He's evil. Because they have video of Clark going to the lab, they're accusing her of being an accomplice. That's that's why she was in prison for treason. Oh my gosh. Rhodes, you, you are a fucking monster. I hate you. So, 
Argo Clark has smooched Bellamy and Wells in the same week. Our girl can get it. Such respect. So the comment, which is a big deal, which is a big social thing on Phoenix, uh, glasses there was supposed to say like hi to the vice chancellor, who we hate with the passion, by the way. We, we, we hate him. And so she dips out and she meets Luke and he asks her to marry her. It like, makes me so sad that Luke and Glass aren't on the show because they're amazing and I ship them so hard and I love them so much. And why were we robbed of them? I, I legitimately feel robbed. Bellamy and Octavia's mother apparently was stabbed or stabbed herself. Sticky puddle of blood, a knife lay beside her, and he takes Octavia out and sits in her bathroom and <laughs> waits for their mother to die. I cannot believe this book. I just mind blown. I, I oh, what is this book? I was so not prepared. And now there's a fire, and Bellamy's looking for Octavia. So the tent that Thalia was in has collapsed, so there's pretty much no way that she could have survived that with how injured she was. This scene, Clark has brought drugs to end Lily's life, but she doesn't want to. My heart, I can't do this. And we have Clark Griffin's first mercy killing. Clark is mad because Wells prevented her from trying to rescue Thalia. I just, I mean, I understand, but... Like, also, I understand Wells' points. It's like, there was no way that she could have saved her in time. And, like, as harsh as it sounds, why risk two lives for one? You know? I get it. Ugh, that's hard. So there's the sky bridge, which connects it, and sometimes it gets shut down so the people on the space station don't talk to each other. Man, all this time in the future and people are still trash. Oh my gosh, there's a problem with the airlock and the oxygen, like in the show. And they're gonna let everybody die except for the people in Phoenix. That's horrific. That's. Oh my gosh, they make the arc like so much better on the show. Like, wow. Because these people, these people are fucking evil. Okay, so apparently the Chancellor didn't know about the experience? He's not a very good Chancellor. Bellamy has just warned Clark that uh, when they go and find Octavia, he's probably going to take off his shirt. Which, in the show, has Clark ever seen Bellamy with the shirt off? Glass is desperate to find Luke. Oh, I love this relationship so much. And now they're together. Oh, come on, they, they have to live. Please don't let Luke and Wes die. Please. Oh, that's what happened. So, uh, she had a choice of telling who the father was, and she chose the roommate that tried to rape her. Which, honestly can't blame her for that early in that situation how traumatized she'd be uh yeah wow that's how this is so good why was it any of this in the show why why i'm so mad mm. so clark and bell may have found fruit but like it's been planted since the apocalypse, because there's no way that it could have survived it. And, like, an apple tree wouldn't grow like that naturally. 
so yeah there there's been people on earth since then in the last 300 years so maybe we will get mount weather i wonder how they're gonna deal with that oh this is cool this is honestly out of the show uh the mount weather stuff was probably like some of my favorite stories so i am excited at the potential and if we don't get mount weather my heart will be broken but i'll live so cool Okay, you know how I was fangirling over Wells? Not so much anymore. So he overheard his father talking about they were going to send the prisoners down to Earth, but they wanted to make sure that it wasn't sooner than necessary, so they were going to wait until there was a problem with the airlock in C-14. Wells has just gone down and damaged it and is basically pissing away oxygen Fuck you, Wells. Like, that's... That's horrible. I mean, yeah, he he wants to be with Clark, but... Oh my gosh. That's just... Like, the callousness is unforgivable. That's like... Finn. That's... That's something that Finn would do. Just... No. No, 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 no. Okay, so now where I stand, show wells is definitely preferable. Holy crap. Some just speared a dude in the throat with an arrow. On Earth. Not not on the Ark. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, so uh we're done. Okay, that that was great. I'm really impressed. Like I said, the writ the writing is simple but very engaging. It's evocative. Um, it could be better, but my writing could be better too, so I'm not going to complain. Um, the storyline is fascinating. I really liked it. I'm really eager to find out what happens next. Um, yeah, so would I recommend this book? Yes, I absolutely would. Um, okay, so if you like this, drop a comment down there and... Tell me if you have a book that you would like to see me lose my mind over. Have a happy day and keep it pretty. Thanks for watching. Bye.